Hi. So I'm here to do a video on, uh, on polar, polar alignment and uh, the reason I'm doing polar alignment is because uh, I've discovered that it's the most important thing for you to do for astrophotography. Um, when I first got into this I thought, uh, I thought what's the big deal? Uh, you, get, uh, you use guiding and uh, you're, you're, you're gonna have perfect tracking nothing's gonna move in the image and and uh, you'll you'll be fine. But uh, as I've uh, worked on it, I've discovered that uh, even with perfect uh, guiding, you will still uh, get uh, star trails in your image if you don't have perfect alignment, perfect polar alignment. So I want to show you what's happening with polar alignment uh, with some simulations. Um, so we'll start with Stellarium uh, for the simulations and here we can see uh, ourselves in a field um, looking up and uh, let's say we want to take a, a picture from with our camera on a tripod so there's no tracking we're just it's fixed on a tripod so we're going to aim it at uh, Helix Nebula over here in the center of our field and I'm going to deselect it because uh, I don't want to track it right now so we're aimed at it but we're not tracking so we're simulating a camera on a tripod. So right now this is fine. If you take a picture of this, uh, it probably looks pretty good. You can take a, a 30 second exposure and uh, it'll look pretty good if you have a wide angle lens. But if you zoom in on it, you'll see that uh, it's not standing still. You can see it drifting out of the screen. So if you try to take a camera sitting on a tripod and with a zoom lens, this drifting will cause star trails in your image. So um, that's pretty clear. So suppose we start tracking this now and uh, we'll see what happens. So let's go back to our observing spot and we're going to get another mount. We're going to pretend that we have the camera on a tracking mount and we'll uh, we'll track it, and uh, but this tracking mount is an alt as mount. In other words, it's oriented to the plane of the Earth. It's it's basically an upright mount that uh, sits vertical to the Earth's surface. So it's it's oriented to the surface of the Earth. So now we're looking at this uh, helix nebula with. Uh, we'll go back to normal time here. So we're looking at the helix nebula and. Uh, we have our tracking mount and we'll zoom in on it and we'll see what happens. Sorry, let me center that. Now, I don't know if you can see that, but there will be a slight rotation in this. So we'll speed up the simulation. One more time. You can see it rotating. I'll do it one more time and it's clearly rotating. So we're tracking, but our image is rotating. And that's because the, the, the mount is not aligned with the axis of rotation. It's aligned with the surface of the Earth. So let's go back here and uh, we'll go back to our uh, normal time and spot. and we're going to get an equatorial mount and the reason why the equatorial mount uh, will uh, help is because it's not aligned to the earth it's set up to be aligned with these lines celestial meridians which all meet at the pole and it's the equatorial mount will rotate around that pole as everything does and so you should not see any movement in your image. So let's go over here and we'll change this to an equatorial type sim mount simulation. And we're going to center Helix Nebula. Now let's zoom in on the nebula. I can 
I don't see any movement. And if I speed up the simulation, there's no movement. So this is what the uh, stop the simulation a bit. So with the equatorial mount, we're we're aligning the telescope with the celestial uh, north pole, and uh, everything in the sky revolves around the celestial north pole. And this way, we can keep our uh, our image still in our, our get the object uh, still in our image. You, uh, if you get the polar alignment off you will, and you're guiding, you will see the rotation that we saw with the Altaz mount. And uh, the guiding helps you keep the star centered. It, basically the guiding will fix the star at one point in your image, but if you have, aren't perfectly polar aligned, everything else in the image will rotate around that star. And uh, I can show you that in an image uh, that I took where my polar alignment was not so great. So let's go here. Um, so this was uh, something I took just uh, off my balcony and, uh, and my balcony faces south so I was unable to polar align. I think I, uh, I may have got one axis correct but not both. So if we zoom in on this you can see streaking here, you'll see kind of left to right streaking. But if I go in this corner, you'll see uh, streaking kind of uh, in the opposite angle. And if I go down in this corner, you'll also see some streaking, vertical streaking. So it was rotating. So what's happening is it's rotating around like this. Uh -huh. So Opposite and if the, this, yeah, and 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 if you look around here, the the center of that rotation is somewhere around here. Not sure exactly. So my guide star was somewhere around here. But because it wasn't a perfect polar alignment, I still got streaking, even though I did do polar alignment. So this is what I realized. Uh, even though you're guiding and you're tracking. You can be tracking, the guiding and the tracking is based on one single star, and if your goat polar alignment isn't perfect, you will get rotation, even in spite of perfect tracking. Oh. So this is my main point of, the, um, of this video, and, and I'll show you how to get a proper polar alignment. <laughs> okay. The end! <laughs> Okay, so here we are um, at our secret observing site. Um, I hope you can hear me because we tested this and uh, I have to talk pretty loud. So um, we're at our site here, which is nice and quiet. It's in a cemetery. It's actually by a church and uh, it's nice and quiet here. Nobody bothers us. Uh, it's a little scary at night though sometimes if you're alone. But uh, anyway, so I'm going to show you um, the the first uh, step of polar alignment is, the, uh, is setting your, your uh, tripod up to point to north. So um, I've tried using my iPhone uh, to find the north, but it, to tell you the truth, it's not very dependable. So instead, I use a compass. So the compass is, uh, you need to know uh, where your declination is on Earth. Uh, well, with a magnetic magnetic declination, and uh, so I got an app to tell me that, and it's uh, 14 degrees in this area. So I set 14 degrees on the, on the compass, and then find north with the compass. where it's pointing in the horizon. So now I know that spot in horizon, I, I make note of it, that spot in the horizon is north, and I can just line up my tripod with it. Okay, so that's it. So that's uh, lined up with north, and uh, when you put your mount on and you 
put its adjustments in the middle, you're pretty much you'll see you should see Polaris in your in your scope. Okay, here we are again, and uh, I'm going to show you the next step, and that's leveling the the tripod. And uh, that's pretty easy to do. You just need a bubble level, and you just place it on top of the tripod, and adjust the leg. So this has to go down on this side. Oh no, it goes the other way. Okay, a little bit on this side. Okay, that's level. And uh, the main reason you need for the level is uh, you, uh, when you put your mount on, you uh, if it's not level. Uh, two things. For one thing, your, all your adjustments will be different from the last time. And the second thing is you, you might run out of adjustment space uh, if it's not really level. So you only have a few degrees of adjustment with the knobs. And, uh, so, and it's nice to have it level every time you come out, you, you start uh, with the mount in the same position. Your latitude shouldn't change at all. The only one you're really going to change is this one, the, uh, uh, the uh, azimuth. Okay, that's it. Alright, so uh, here we are in the next stage. I just wanted to show you uh, some important things, which the adjustments. And uh, you have the uh, altitude adjustment bolts and the azimuth adjustment screws here, which uh, you have to loosen one and tighten the other. But before you do your alignment, you want to make sure that the mount is set perfectly centered, point, uh, pointing north, so you have an adjustment both ways. And you're going to set your latitude to your your latitude. You're going to there's a come around and you can see the uh, degree markers. Over here, you'll have markings of your uh, latitude, and you're going to set that for your latitude, and and so you'll be pretty close to uh, seeing Polaris when you when you uh, look through the scope and um, this is the this is the one of the reasons why you want to level so every time this is pretty much where it needs to be when you go back to your your sights you know if you haven't driven too far okay so then the next stage of the thing is the polar alignment with the polar scope and uh, there's a scope in here. We have to turn this to see the scope. Now we're opening up the hole. And the eyepiece of the scope is down here. You come down and So this polar scope is aligned with the right ascension axis of the scope and we're going to line that right up with Polaris. Okay, so we're going to do um, polar alignment advanced method and this is using some software called KSTARS and ECOS and what it does basic, basically is it slews the scope to uh, 30 degrees takes a series of pictures. It's it slews the scope uh, twice, pa uh, 30 degrees and then 60 degrees, and it takes a series of pictures. And then it sees uh, from the pictures, it calculates and measures uh, what stars it's seeing and the arc that's being created by the movement of the scope. And uh, it figures out where the center of the scope is pointed. And then it gives you a correction vector to um, to correct your alignment and you go out and you make your adjustments and make that correction and we'll show you how that works so let's start it up okay we're still recording so what happened is uh, now I've taken a dark frame so the picture will look a bit better so we're parked uh, unpark let's go back let's start over Okay, capture.
starting solver. Done. Okay, let's rotate. It's rotating. Capturing image, starting solver. So now it's going to rotate some more. The solver is uh, what the what it does when it uh, looks at the picture and figures out where the scope is pointing. So three of those, and it will find out what our polar alignment error is because I've just finished doing the polar scope alignment. Okay, so the error is polar error you see here, one, less than a degree, it's only six minutes of arc and 33 seconds. And uh, I think I can get it under, um, under a minute into the seconds area of error. So it says uh, correction and vector is plotted select a bright star to reposition the correction and vector and click next when done so well this star is really bright uh, oh it's a very short correction vector I'm gonna zoom the picture a little oh, no, that's not that one this one and uh, make some adjustments Go back. Done. Okay, so let's get our picture back. All I want to do now is just show what the uh, what the result is. Done. Eighteen seconds of arc of error. So that's really nice. So. Uh, you can't even see what kind of a correction to do on that. It's too small. So that's a really good, that's our perfect supposedly polar alignment thanks to doing plate solving and uh, this program. And now I'm ready to do some uh, astrophotography.